Hey folks, this is Abby from Busy Beaver Button Company, and uh, today I'm going to show you how to use our button templates for laying out your own artwork to make custom buttons. So, step one is you need to get the template. So, we're going to go online to busybeaver.net. Once this loads, you'll see in the top toolbar, templates, right there. So you click on that. I'll show you both the Illustrator and the Photoshop versions. We've got both of them on the website. So first is Adobe Illustrator versions. I'm going to do the one inch round, so I just, you can control click, right click if you're on a PC, save that link as. I'm going to save it on a desktop so I can find it later. So I got that one. And now right below that was the Adobe Photoshop one. So again, right click or command click, control click, sorry, save it as on the desktop. So we have them both here. So I'm going to start out with the uh, Illustrator. Open that up here, take a look, and kind of show you guys around. So this is the one inch button template. There's a couple different layers, final step layer, the preview layer, template layer, background text layer, and your art layer. So first of all, this is the final step layer. If we turn all the rest of them off, you can see it's just pretty much that black ring. That's the cut line, so that's where we cut them out when we're actually making the buttons. Preview layer, this is pretty cool. So the preview layer masks out everything else um, except for just what will be the face of the button. So we'll, we'll use this later. I'll show you. It's really useful for creating your artwork. Template layer. It has a final layer cut line built in. This is showing you the blue dotted line is the face. These two pink lines in between that is where the background text will go, which I'll show you. So anything outside of this blue line, all of this area is the bleed. So this is the face of the button, this is what you're going to see, and this is where the button wraps around. So you want to make sure that your artwork goes into this area because it will give you a really seamless look to your finished button. We've got, well we'll turn this on so you can see it. This is the background text layer. So this is text that you can put on the button on the side of it uh, if you'd like to. The background text is pretty teeny, it's uh, visible from the side and the back of the button, but it's a cool place for like a website or something like that. Um, you can see there's not a ton of space, so you want to keep it pretty short and sweet back here. And um, we have a default to uh, Helvetica Bold, which is a good font to use. Um, using all caps is good, um, and using a pretty simple sans serif font is best. It's easiest to read. This is really small text, so making it as easy to read as possible is a good idea. Um, high contrast, so white on black, black on white, those kinds of things to keep in mind are a good idea for background text. And then this last layer is the your artwork here, which we don't have any yet, so let me show you how we do that. So I'm going to grab the picture that I want to put on a button, which is uh, this lovely shot of uh, Uncle Jesse, John Stamos from Full House. So I want to put him on a button. I'm super excited to wear him on my shirt. So here's my art. I'm going to just cut and paste it, making sure that I'm pasting it into the your art here layer. So there it is. So if I use, remember we said that preview layer is pretty helpful it's going to mask out everything else. So right now I'm seeing just what's going to be on the face of the button. So if I decide that, you know, I, want, I think I need a little bit more of his mullet in there. That's pretty nice. So I'll shrink the artwork down until I have it the way that I want it on the button face. So maybe something like that. I think that looks pretty good. Now when I take the preview layer off, you can see that there's still some white areas. So what I can do, this is a quick tip, if you want to fill in the bleed that's right here, because right now this is pretty close to the edge of the button, so you're going to see that, that white, and it's not going to look great when it's finished. So I'm going to do this cool trick. I'm going to build, make a square, and then I'm going to go Object, Arrange, Send to Back. So it's going to be the very last thing in this layer of artwork and template and everything else. Now what I'm going to do is do this eyedropper tool. And I'm going to eyedropper. Now you see that the square is still selected. I'm going to eyedropper the background here so that square just turned blue. And now because it's blue and it matches that background, you're really not going to notice um, that my picture didn't actually bleed all the way to the edge because it's pretty much camouflaged now. So what you did notice is when the background was filled in that there is this like white ring around the outside. And it's part of the final step layer. You can see as I turn the final step on and off. Now this is something that kind of freaks people out sometimes, or like my bleed, 
doesn't go all the way to the edge of the button. I don't want this white ring. The white ring is actually just for our production purposes. Um, this makes sure that we don't have any ink that prints back there because that's inside the button um, and it can screw things up if there's ink that builds up back there because it's pretty sensitive. So don't worry about this white, this white area. Don't delete it. Just leave it where it is. Um, basically, a good rule of thumb is anything, if you want to lock all these layers that are part, that are kind of for us, so they don't get messed with, that's perfect because really just don't mess with the final layer, leave it as it is, it's just for us, so. Um, so say I want to do some background text. Background text, like I said, it's going to show up on the side of the button. So I want to do some background text, short and sweet. I can move it around so that it's exactly where I want it. Maybe I want it up here. So there's my button all laid out. Looks pretty good. So I can show you the same thing if we were doing this in uh, Photoshop. It's pretty much the same. So there's my template in Photoshop. I'm going to open up Uncle Jesse. I'm going to cut and paste. Again, you see the layers are pretty much the same. Put it in the Your Art Here layer. So there we go. Turn on the proof. So maybe for this one I decided I did just want a close-up of his face, so I could leave it like that. Now, if I want to do my background text, did I get it? You want to select the tool, or sorry, the text tool to select all the background text, and then I'm going to do again Uncle Jesse and Club. Now you can see, um, because his hair is pretty dark, the black text isn't really showing up like it did before. Oops. So I just go up here and I can change it to white. And maybe I want to give it a kind of a solid background to be against instead of this like black and then blue. Oops. So I'm going to turn it until I like where it is, maybe like right above his hair. So I'm going to turn off that preview layer just to see everything. It looks pretty good. I'm going to turn on the proof layer. I like how that looks. Everything looks good. So now I need to save it. So if I go to File, Save As, right now you'll see when you get the template, it's called Your Name One Inch .psd. I'm going to save it as. Now the Your Name is where you fill in your name. That way, um, when the art gets to us, it has your name. We can match it back up to your order. If everybody's came through saying your name, it would be hard to tell if you called things like button.jpg, something like that. It's not super useful um, for matching it up later. So if you can call it your name, that's super helpful for us. So I'm going to call it Abby Hambre, that's my name, one inch round, um, and save it on the desktop. So there we go. I have my button. It's all ready to go. I can submit this online at busybeaver.net, and uh, I'll be good to go with some awesome Uncle Jesse one-inch buttons. So if you have any questions um, on using the templates or anything else about making a button, you can give us a call or send us an email. Uh, we're at 773-645-3359. Um, there's a contact form on the website you can fill out, or you can just send us an email at orders at busybeaver.net. We're happy to answer questions, help you out, um, get things going. So again, uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful and now you're an expert at using our button templates and uh, we'll look forward to making some for you soon. Thanks.